Okay, let's talk, Mr. Mike. Let's get it. Let's get it. Welcome to another episode of A Different Perspective Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Green. Today, I have a special guest in the building with me. And the conversation that we're going to be having today is a much needed conversation. Uh, when she reached out to me, she was dealing with something herself. And, you know, I, after we talked, I was like, hey, this is a conversation that we need to have, especially in our community. And that that conversation is talking about child neglect, by, by the way. way a single motherhood. By the, by the way. Working a, mother. Working mother. Yeah. All right. So before we get started, let me introduce y'all to my guest. Uh, her name is Monice. Oh, y'all can call her Mo. Just What's up? Mo. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you for coming. It. Get into it. So you were saying uh, that you wanted to talk about neglect by the way of single mothers. Yes. Before it, before we even wrap that, before we break everything down, right? Tell me what you mean by that. What that means to you. So this type of neglect is not intentionally, it's not malicious, it's not because she don't want to be with her kids. Yeah. This happens when you have a primary parent at home mm -hmm. that exhausts all resources. This mother here falls in between that gap of not getting benefits anymore. Yeah. She done worked her way out of the system. Yeah. She don't get the, the free daycare. Yeah. She have moved herself out the system to the point that she moved out the neighborhood. Right. So she don't got that old school lady there no more to watch the kids. Yeah. She don't got that. That extra help. No extra help. She done worked her way out the system, and now she worked herself into a situation. And now it went from I'm working because I'm a working mom to I'm working because I have to work to feed these children because yeah. I don't qualify for food stamps no more. Yeah. I don't qualify for the extra help, so now I'm working and these kids are home by themselves, and now they are getting neglected. Yeah. Man, that's 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 deep. Yeah. That's deep because uh, I'm going to tell you, first of all, I commend you, first of all, for even having the guts to say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I caused. I'm the blame. because And you're successful. You know what I'm saying? Only from outside. Yeah, not but, inside. but no, but that's what I'm saying. Like you're yeah. in, in the corporate world. Yeah. You're successful. You have everything that degree. The 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 working hard working yeah. woman would want. But you realize, hey, along the way of me getting all these accomplishments, I neglected my, what, children. my children, what was important. Yes. Yeah, I felt like I was working for them, but and I was able to get all the excuses because y'all would commend me. Like the black community would give me a pass. We yeah. give working mom the pass because it's three stages. And I'm going to go over there in a little bit because you see me from the outside and say, man, I see you doing your thing. You working. Yeah. But you never ask who at the house with these kids while you working 16 hours. Yeah. It don't, it don't sit and register with the people yet until... You it's talk to the kids. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, I've I been cooking since I was four or five years old. I've been locking the door. Like, yeah, it's real. Yeah. So it's three It's three stages. And the first stage is intimidation. And that's by way of our parents say, you open the door, I'm going to whoop your butt. Yeah. You get home, you call me soon, you get in the house. Yeah. Your food in the microwave. And, it's, and that stage there is it's that five to ten. No, I'm going to say, yeah, between the ages – Five and ten. Yeah. So mama could really handle that at five and ten because she could intimidate the kids. I'm big dog in the house. Yeah. I'm I'm a, a presence with my voice over the phone. My kids actually listening to me. Right. While I'm over the phone, walking them through how to do certain things in the house. Right. Don't open the door for nobody. Don't answer this phone unless you see me. Yeah. That that eight year old got a cell phone already because. Yeah. Not because he cool, not because he deserve it, because He's mama needs to it. grow up. Yeah. yeah, mama needs to get in contact with you. And this stage here is prior to the ring camera. Yeah. We talk about about ten years ago before the ring camera. You could see in the house, and you could see the door opening. We talk about really based on what mama and child got going on. Yeah. So that's stage one, intimidation. I'm gonna whoop you. You better do this. Don't open the door. Like you could do that. Yeah. But by the second stage, 
Them kids don't care about getting a whooping. Yeah, they done grew out that yeah. whooping stage. I take the whooping because I still want to go outside. I want to be a kid. I'm going to go to the pool. Yeah. You've been at work all day, mama. When we're going to come outside, when we're yeah. going to be able to do what kids do. So now they start sneaking outside because they can't, they can't do what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? While you're at work. And then when you come home, it's too late to do it. So we might as well sneak outside. So this is stage two now. That's that begging, pleading, and buying the kids. Yeah. You know, when y'all talked about, you had Mr. Earl here, and he talked about you don't get shoes twice a year. That's everybody's story, unless your mama working like that. Yeah. And you see those kids with all this, this and that, it's because mama now saying, son, if you do this, mama going to do that for you. Yeah, we bribing him. Yeah. Yeah. He got a 55-inch TV in the bedroom. Yeah. He got a big dog bed. He got all these incentives that he really don't deserve, yeah. but he do deserve because he's complying with mama authority because mama can't whoop no more. Yeah. You know, now we just negotiating in the house. Yeah. You find yourself negotiating with your kid. Yeah. That's crazy. It is. So look, let me ask you, let me ask you this before you go to the third step. Take me back to how it was for you growing up. Did you, were you in a two-parent home? Were you in a single-parent home? Give me the backstory. So I had the best of both worlds. My dad's from the 40s. I had a mama growing up. My mama didn't work. My dad hold it down. Yeah. And then crack cocaine happened. And, you know, one of my mom, my mom fell victim to that. And it shook the family a little bit because now I'm in a single father household. Hmm. So now my dad is leaving us at home. Not just because working, because now he got to go find another woman. Yeah. And I'm seeing, like, I could play on my daddy's emotions with that I miss my mama type stuff. Yeah. It, look, before <laughs> before you go any further with that, that's still going on right now. That's why a lot of boys, I was thinking about that this morning when I was thinking about the conversation we, we was going to have. Okay. See, I was adopted, Right. But my from adopted a family parents, member or no, 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 from from somebody okay, outside okay. the family. But my adopted parents, they was cool, but they was older. You get what I'm saying? They wasn't hip. They was Christians. They was like set on doing yeah. the right thing. Like they wasn't hip to what was going on outside. So I could manipulate. Like I was just thinking to myself earlier today. Like that's where I learned how to manipulate in the house because I, I I could manipulate the situation to get what I want. You get what I'm saying? And I could always use that, oh, I ain't, you know, I ain't got my real parents. You know what I'm saying? And it'll work. But go ahead with your story. So, yeah, so I, I did that with my dad until he passed away. I had an older father. My mm -hmm. dad had me at 50, so he was only in my life till I was 12 and he was gone. Where do you fit in the... I'm the youngest, so okay. I never got whoopings. Yeah. So I was like, I see my sister, who was my mom, kind of, sort of, because... She fell victim to that. She had to, me and my daddy used to let us stay home from school a lot because he didn't want, he he, he couldn't get back to pick us up. Yeah. So y'all just stay home. Y'all yeah. don't want to go to school, no way. Yeah. Like, if you stay home this time, daddy going to make y'all, and, and it was cool for me because I didn't want to go to school no damn way. Yeah. But my middle sister used to challenge that authority, like, wait a minute, I know this not right. Yeah. So, um, and then... When my oldest sister, she 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 don't have any kids because of this, cause she been a mom her whole life. Wow. Yeah, it really, really, and it's my sister was fifteen when she moved out into her own apartment, and I thought that she was much older because the what she was doing, how she was moving the house, and then I sit there and I lined up our age. I said, Mimi, you 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 been you been doing this mama thing. Yeah. And that's why I look out for every Mother's Day. I don't miss. Yeah. I don't miss no Mother's Day for my yeah. sister because she was really there for us. You know, you, you just said something that I never even thought about like that. But it's a lot of women that don't want to have kids, right? And I never thought that, but it's a lot of women that grew up raising their it's siblings. Siblings, yeah. So I never even thought to equate with maybe, you know, I've been doing this since I was a kid. I don't want to have to keep doing this. You get what I'm saying? Or you could look at it like the younger sibling, why she's not as mature with her kids. Because where you fall in line in your family, also you have more help or you have no help. 
So that plays a big part too in the neglecting of, of our black kids in our community too. Okay, so uh, growing up, like once your once your dad died, what was life like? For you then, first of all, how old was you, and then what was what was life like? So I was twelve. I don't really remember. I I didn't have a lot of years with my dad mm -hmm. as much as my older sisters. So it was like I missed them because I seen how much they missed them. Yeah. I hear the stories, and I wish I had those stories. Yeah. So, but my aunt and my uncle took me in, and that's another conversation for another day on. What really shaped me because you really don't get shaped until you like 13, 14. Yeah. You, you, that molding don't really happen. That's the stage three I'm about to get into. So, really, my upbringing was not really of my parents, it's really of my aunt and uncle who took me in after my dad died. And how, how was it like living with them? Was it a good situation? It, I tell you this, we didn't want for nothing. Yeah. But, I will say this, and people that know me, my reckless mouth mm -hmm. comes from my, my aunt. Yeah. Yeah. So me being being able to see how far I could talk to people, yeah, it comes from her. Because my mom was not like that as much because she had a husband that kind of like, slow it down. I'm the man. I, you know, I'm first. So not seeing that as much as I got older is... is it, it kind of play a factor in why I'm, I'm single. And I couldn't find a man to be in front of my kids when I needed to be because of my reckless behaviors. Wow. So at, at 12, you, you staying with your auntie and your uncle, right? Yes. Uh, what was you, like, so now you got to go to school all the time. They ain't play that, right? No, they did not play. And it, it was cool because... Um, I was still the baby in that house. Like I'm still the baby. I'm still getting my way, and I, and I'm getting too much of my way because I'm still saying things like I miss my mama. She's not here, and my dad's dead. And I'm still playing on my family emotions, yeah. and my son is a mini version of me times two. Yeah. You know how people say your kid's going to give it back to you? Yeah. Oh, he's giving it. Yeah. He he ain't letting up. Yeah. And that goes into the stage three that guilt. Yeah. And that guilt comes in when the kids are able to speak up now. And you try to reduce them a little bit by saying, well, I didn't have that. Yeah. Well, my daddy wasn't here, and I'm trying my best. And if your, if your daddy was here, I wouldn't be working so hard. Yeah. So you try to guilt them back to a minimal uh, uh, role in the house so you could kind of still control the house. Yeah. But as a boy, he going to start getting them questions like, why you picked a man like that? Mm. So yeah. let me ask you, man. When he asked you that, what was your answer? When, when I'm not mad, I would give him a realistic answer like, the woman you see today is not the woman I once was. Yeah. And it was a particular time that me and your daddy was like this parallel. Yeah. That's why we attract to each other. See, he see me here and his dad's not able to grow in his eyes because his daddy's not around. Yeah. So he he his dad is stuck in the box. Yeah. I bust out that box and I was able to move forward. But since when a man go to jail and a mother don't connect and don't keep their relationship, yeah. Whatever that man left off at, that's where he stays at. Yeah. He don't get to grow. With the with the family, yeah. wherever wherever stage he went to jail at, that's the end for him. Yeah, unless he got a strong family, come grab them kids on a week or his mom would do that. But it's a lot of black men. Now I worked in the penitentiary for four years. Yeah, that's how I ended up moving to Conroe. If you don't have a strong support system that people of your blood come grab your kids, yeah, y'all just no different from a stranger. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna stop. Wherever that 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 fam when when the daddy stopped coming to pick them up and all of that, if the family don't get involved, it stops right there. Yeah. And people don't understand. See, I'm a I'm glad we can have a real conversation. Uh, I have kids, and with my kids, me and they parent me and they parents didn't work out. Just like you, I'm I'm willing to admit, man. It was it was times where I was a fuck up as a dad. But when, when you first become a parent, nobody gives you an instruction book. 
Nobody tells you how to do this shit. And it ain't until like the third, second or third child till you finally Come figure on. out like, hey, man, I got this shit together now. But what I failed to realize in that was that that first child went through a lot. Mm. That child, that first child suffered a lot because of my ignorance, because of my lack of responsibility. So I can't blame him for feeling the way that he feels. All I can do is try to get him to understand. He may not understand now, right now yeah. but later on when he develop, when he start having his own family, he'll understand. You get what I'm saying? But uh, I say this, and a lot of people don't understand this. People that say, I love this child, right? Mm -hmm. Just because they gave birth to the child. But if you haven't been in this child's life, let's just say, the, like you talking about with your child, the, that side of the family, right? Let's just say they've been estranged for the, the, the dad. Let's say the dad been in jail for five years. They've been estranged from him for five years. They ain't been around him or nothing for five years, right? And then all of a sudden the dad get out and he bring him around the family again. And they sit up and say, I love, man, this is my nephew. I, how? How can you love him? You don't know him. Five years done passed. That's not the same child that you knew from back there. But people don't understand oh. that. You get what I'm saying? I totally understand. And um, mama make make job seem bigger than what it is. We yeah. kind of complain when there's no complaining going on mm. because we're programmed to say we hate our job. So that's why you see a lot of kids that don't work because yeah. they hear about jobs like, oh, shit, I don't want that. My mama talked about that. Yeah. So we kind of make the job bigger than what it is because we got to come in the house with this far-fetched story. Yeah. Like the like like the Paul Bundy story. Like I've been at work all day and I didn't eat all day and the whole time you ate all day at yeah, work. Yeah. You had free food in the in the break room, mama. But the kids don't know that. Yeah. So it kind of made the kids kind of love their mama trauma bonding. Yeah. You didn't trick your kids to love you a little bit more because they think you going through something that reality you're not really going through too much or nothing that you didn't put yourself in. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this. So. How old was you when you had your first child? I was 18. I was supposed to be 19, but he came early. So, because I want to know. Yeah. How did you, so you 18. I am, I was 18. How did you find out you was pregnant? I knew instantly. Right after it happened? Both times I had kids, I knew instantly. How, how did you know? You just felt it? I just know my body. So when I got pregnant with my son, I think I was not even much two months pregnant when I was able to tell him I was pregnant. Yeah. It was a long pregnancy because I always found out super early. It was not one of those four, five months, and I knew instantly I was pregnant with my son. And I tell my son this, if your daddy never did nothing else, he told me to keep you. Yeah. He planted that seed in my head to say, Monique, you could take care of this child. Yeah. It was a struggle. I figured it out. But if... My baby daddy never told me nothing else. He told me, you will. I don't believe in that. That's yeah. not even much on the option, yeah. on the table. Yeah. And he gave me the encouraging to keep my son and push through with him. Yeah. Even if he couldn't go on that journey with him. And my child's father loved his, his, he, his daddy loved him. Yeah. But he had a circumstance that pulled him away and it stomped their they relationship. So at 18, you had a child. Yes. Was it scary? Like what what was going through? Were you were you like were you prepared? Did you have a job at the time? I've been working since I was 14. I always had me a little job. Yeah. But I tell you what, I never knew about welfare until I got with my kids. My, my son and father. I, I knew about food stamps. Like, I don't have those stories about mama growing up and stuff. Like, that was never my story. Like I said, my daddy was a, a working, hustling man. Yeah. I moved in with my aunt that now she got our income because my daddy left money when he died. So yeah. that was not my story. I didn't, I was not introduced to a different lifestyle to when I was pregnant with my son. I, I started living on low income. I got food stamps. My baby daddy fill out the food stamp paper. Excuse me. I'm sorry. You good. He fill out the food stamp papers for me the first time because yeah. I never did that before. So now you 18, you on uh, welfare. You you on your own. You got your own spot. I got. I, I moved in Havistock. 
in 07, and I stayed till, till 2010, like almost four years. Yeah. So look, a lot of we see a lot of women or people here that get in, you know, they get into these low income apartments and all of that, you know, yes. and the rent is fairly cheap. Zero dollars and zero cents. Yeah. And I used to throw it in his face. I was like, this is my apartment. I pay zero dollars and zero cents. <laughs> <laughs> I say that all day long to anybody. It's, but you know what? I would say this. When I stayed over there, it felt like big. It felt like I didn't feel small because everybody had everything. I had a nice apartment. I kept my apartment nice. Anybody know me, I stayed with a nice car, like yeah. the girls I roll with, yeah. they they was not like them. We was like something else. Yeah. We had jobs. We our kids was up to par. Like, you know, we it that was not our story. Even though we seen that, but yeah. that was not my story. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you because it's a lot of women, like I said, that be in the low income apartments. And instead of them, you you ain't paying no rent. Instead of you going to go find you a hustle, like they they just won't do nothing. Nah, and and it'll be airport. years. It'll be years of them staying in there stuck. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I see it could have been me though. Yeah. If it wasn't for my little girl daddy. Yeah. I almost got out. I'm so thankful because when you lose your parents at a certain age, you go looking for God. Yes. And um and my and my son is so fortunate that he didn't have to. That's not his story. Yeah. But he still have a story and. We tend to forget that our kids are growing up and they have their own point of view of what's going on. Yeah. And just because you giving them just a little bit more than you, that don't mean they, they abandonment is not valid. Yeah. Because we think of abandonment from the 80s as your mama sold you for crack yeah, or yeah, you yeah. was outside hungry. That's 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 cool, but that's not their that's not their generation abandonment. Abandonment be like literally, I've been at home all day long yeah i got a phone and a, and, a, and a computer and all that but what my mama had yeah you know and it was it was a little different but when my little girl daddy came along he put something more in me like okay you making eight dollars an hour mm, that's not my type of girl yeah <laughs> i don't like them type of girls yeah I like those type of girls, yeah. and it was like, oh, you like them? Let me go be like them. Yeah. Let me let me go get my degree. Let me go get up and get off my ass, cause yeah, I'm a working mama, but I'm not a skilled worker. Yeah. And that's another conversation for another day to a lot of people that gets in these jobs. And you know, you're supposed to be above that job. Yeah. You really, you have all this up here. Why are you stuck at that McDonald's job? Why are you still a janitor? You gotta put a little bit more effort into that so your kids won't feel that at home. You right about that. You right about that. So you now you you got your job. You 18, you got your own spot, you I got, got your job. Car, yeah. You All you right. at the airport. I'm at the airport and I'm crushing it. I'm I'm going job from job. You can make 50 cents more, I'm gone. I'm at the next job. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just at the airport and it's like high school and it's fun. Yeah. But you go home and you tell your kids I had a long day at work. That's not our reality. Yeah. We up there acting like high school. Yeah. It's it's not and and when parents go home and tell these far fetched stories to your kids, that's why we got a generation that's not working. Yeah. Everybody wanna be an entrepreneur, but you 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 missing valuable steps when you when you don't become the lower worker and work your way up. You just want to be the boss. Yeah. And you really don't got what it takes because you never seen those steps. The process you skip yeah. process. The whole process be messed up. So now you done got yourself out the hood. When when did you decide to go back to school and get your degree? You had your child already. I had two kids already. So you're working. Yeah. And you're going to school to get a so degree. So I always so that's another thing about me. I have 17 different trades. Wow. I've always been in school. I always further my education. My trades run uh, uh, HVAC, plumbing, shoe shining. I always picked up a second trade because a I like to learn. I yeah. don't like to be the dumb person in the room. Yeah. It, and I referee professionally. You know, I just always had me something going on. But I went back to school because. Um, after I got my medical system, phlebotomy, and all that stuff like that, I just, um, other women will push you and promote you because you start seeing what other girls are doing yeah. at the job. 
And before you know it, they're going to ask you questions like, why are you still at that position? Like, you're not smart enough to take a test? Yeah. So it's just promoting yourself. And it's crazy because people would say, I did it for my kids. But you really don't do it for your kids. You do it because society tells you it's time to, to promote yourself. Yeah. So being being that you you doing good now. Outside would say that. Yeah, but I'm saying like, yeah. okay, so I'm out from the, the hood, outside, from out from I outside. I drive a decent car, yeah. Oh, you doing good now, yeah. right? When did you start noticing like, hey, it's something, it's a disconnect with me and my kids? Well, not, not so much with my daughter because she's not at that age yet, but I think she's scared straight because she see how me and my son relationship is playing out. Yeah. And it kind of like messed up their relationship when they when when you see the the, the son disrespect the mom and the daughter want to jump in. Yeah. And um, about when he fifteen when he had sex for the first time, that it, it shifted the whole relationship in the house because now he think he a man. Man, when you as a as a child, yeah. male or female, I don't know what it is, man. It's just something about that first sexual interaction that make you feel grown. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It's just like you, you know, like. That's a lot of responsibility though. But at the time you a child, you just trying don't to. Care. You, yeah, you don't care. And then once you do it, you you feel like, hey man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm grown now. I can't leave you at home no more. Yeah. Back to trying to find a babysitter now because you broke all trust. But as a mom, you forget your when you was fifteen, yeah. you, you tend yeah. to forget that. You like, cause you got this, you got the 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 five and ten year old age, and you got it down packed, and you and your kids is like this, and y'all yeah. rocking, and y'all rolling, y'all have a relationship, and then is it jump into something different? And another thing is, I want to touch on that you contradict yourself in parenting. Mm. You tell your kid, don't get in a car with a stranger. Yeah. And then one day you put your kid in a car. In an Uber. Drink. Not so much an Uber. Oh, Let me tell you what yeah. else. Go ahead. It's that time you can't make it to the football practice to pick them up. Hmm. And you tell them to get in the car with your homeboy. Ooh. You open doors like that. Yeah. Yeah. You get a phone call and you know you can't leave work and your child's somewhere and you be like, where your friends at? And then it just snowballing. You 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 backtracking everything you taught your child. Yeah. Because it it, it don't fit your schedule no more. Yeah. It, it messes up the family. You done told your child since he was this small, don't get in a car with a stranger. And now it is time for you to put your child in a car with a stranger. Cause you don't know those people. So when he while while your son was growing up, like you how long did you and his dad stay together? Not not long because he went to jail when my son was 10 months old, and this was it for him. Okay. But we was together like five months before I got pregnant. So uh, did, did did your son have any type of male role model? Absolutely. And, 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 the, and the thing is, we're talking about sisters that have husbands. My sister's been married for 15 years to the same guy. That's yeah. the only man she ever been with. Have another sister that's, you know, have a, a strong male presence in, in my son's life. But it don't count when it's not in your home. Right. It don't count. Right. Uh, you said you said something. And, I'm you know, I, again, I applaud you for saying it. You said, hey, the reason why I couldn't keep a man like that is because of my mouth. Yeah, and and it, and it goes back and um, we're not trained to be in a relationship with the opposite sex. Yeah, growing up because we it's it's not common to see the mom and dad in the house or any uncle in the house or whatever. So we don't much know how to interact. My idea of a man is what I've seen on TV, and that's not realistic. Yeah. So I'm looking for the mega man that I built in my head, not the realistic man that actually don't put the toilet seat down, they eat and leave everything on the table. <laughs> you know, he probably babe and leave the ring around the tub. Yeah. Like things that shouldn't bother you if you was in the house with a boy, but it bothers me because I grew up in the house with all girls. Yeah. And 
after you eat, you clean up, and I wanted a man to be a woman in the house, mm. and that's not happening. Yeah. He going to be a man in this house. No matter how many bills he pay or don't pay, he's still the man in the house. Yeah. And I couldn't accept that for the longest. You don't, you don't, uh, being that you grew up with your dad, that ain't like give you a different level of respect for men? But I was like young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, that's why my older sisters got it. They yeah, got yeah. it because they had more experience with my daddy. Yeah. Now my daddy, you know, he taught me like how to get up, brush your teeth, wash your face, comb your hair, yeah. you know, stuff like that. I remember him doing. But I'm catching my daddy at an age that he's back dating again. Yeah. You know, so I'm seeing my daddy trying to refine him. But my sisters got the game really down pat. Yeah. But I just, I, I didn't soak it up as fast enough. So did your, with, with, with your with your son, did he, because of what was going on in the house, did that cause him to act out in school or his Not grades at all. to decline? Not, my son is the most respectable guy you ever met. And it's, it's crazy because the only person that, that give him this friction is me. I'm the only person that give him to this level of a disappointment. It's me. Nope. My son's an A.B. on a road student. He got accepted to school, to college. He's a good student. It's just the disconnect is having to raise your child. That's not his role. Yeah. And on top of that, I kind of put a cap on his experiences because now I got to pick you up. You can't stay the whole time, son. Even though all the other kids get to stay at the football game to the end of quarter, I got to be working at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So you able to experience something, but you can never get the full experience of nothing. Yeah. You uh, you had said something. You said something about a weekend, Mom. Yeah. Ex explain that. So now after the sex thing, because I blew it up yeah. way out of proportion, and he decided to go move in with my sister and her husband. And um, I, I I could see how men feel about they only get called for what they need. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm only getting a phone call when he needs something or when a weekend and I got to move my, my, my weekend around to, you know, to spend time with him. But it, it's a blessing, though, because I get to relearn him. And yeah. he relearning me outside of the pressure miles. Man, you know, I'm glad you said that because for a lot of men, that's how I be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna lie, man. I be honest. Even with my kids, bro, it's times I be like, man, fuck them. It's hard. And that shit might be, it might sound hard to somebody else, or, but I'm just being honest because, you know, I remember their mother, and this ain't to bash them, but they had caused such a disconnect, you know, Okay, yeah, I used to fuck up in the past, but when I got my shit together, you still held me to who I used to be. And I had surpassed that times 10. Right. But you still held me to that, and you had planted, they had planted so much negativity to the point where it was a disconnect. So I'm like you. I'm trying to buy their love. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, hey, man, when they call, I'm doing it. Not mm -hmm. realizing all I'm doing is just setting them up to use me. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because people don't understand whether it's your child or not. If they don't fuck with you like that, they don't fuck with you like that. So I start, I found myself getting upset because I call to check on them genuinely. Hey, this is my child. I just want to see what's up. I can't get on the phone with you. But every time you need something, mm -hmm. you can call me. And the fact that it's coming from a woman, yeah. to me, that really means a lot. Because it's a lot of dudes that get bashed when we say that. You get what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that think we just supposed to, oh, yeah, man, that's your child. That's just how it is. You supposed nope. to say, man, we have feelings, too. That shit hurt. When I done made plans to come get you for, for Christmas or whatever, and I done bought Christmas presents, also, you don't never show up. And You know what I'm saying? That shit hurt, you know? And I know, uh, like I said, a lot, of, a lot of women, they don't understand it because they have the child. Mm hmm they don't see, they don't have the disconnect that the other parent has. You know what I'm saying? And, and what hurts more is when you at work all day on the, on the holiday and the kids at house by themselves. Yeah. I don't think people totally understand when you work in that medical field, when you work in them 16s and them kids at home, 
yeah, you calling and you doing all what you can. The best thing for you to do is is to time management mm -hmm. and budgeting. Cause do you really gotta be at work all those days? No, nah, man. Do you really gotta miss everything? And in the beginning, I was able to 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 plan correctly. Yeah, I was able to do a lot of looking on looking on the website of the school and doing this and that. But when them kids start getting involved in after school activities, when the stuff starts switching up, and I'm going to school, that's when you start losing them far as the guilt. Yeah. The guilt start kicking in, and you trying to you trying to say, "Our mama doing this for us." Yeah. But really, it's not for them because they don't want that. They start telling, "I didn't ask for that." You know, my son, my kids had came and stayed with me for the summer. And at the time, I'm making the transition from the streets to, you know, getting my shit together and, you know, being a family man, right? So, I was working two jobs. Mm. When my kid, when I woke up, everybody was asleep. When I when I left to go to the first job, everybody was asleep. When I come back, everybody's there, but I only have time to eat, take me a little nap, and then I'm gone again. So they only seen me coming. And going. Yes. And at the end of the, it was almost the end of the summer. And my son, he was five at the time. And he came and he said, Dad, I've been here the whole summer. And I barely seen you. And that did something to me. Right? And no matter how much I wanted the money, I realized that that shit wasn't worth it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I realized that because it it, it had already been a disconnect. And now I, I'm trying to build, but I'm always gone. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm making the money so I can buy them something. I realized then that they don't give a fuck about the sure. money. They want you. You know what I'm saying? I started taking my kids on these crazy trips. Yeah. Versus Disneyland. Well, minor things first. Like you do San Antonio, you do, you do, you do like the Dallas, and you know, you do the Legoland. And then your bag is bigger now because you're working and you, you get this travel pay. And then you just... I take them to Disney. I took them to Tampa, um, Chicago last year. They about to go somewhere for spring break. And you just overly compensating and you're still not accepting what's really going on. Yeah. You're still not fighting for the root cause that this child here, no matter what you buy them, where you take them, they still want that traditional family that you could not provide for them. You know, uh, Being that society mm -hmm. would deem, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say society because you are successful, whether you realize it or not, right? You are successful. Do you, even though you're successful, do you regret what it, you know what I'm saying? Do you regret everything that you have being that the relationship with your son is what it is? It's necessary. I believe in God. All things work for the greater good for those who serve the Lord. Yeah. Um. I I know my son is going to pull through on the other side. It's necessary. It's necessary for me because it give my mom a little more grace. I give my mom more mercy and grace because you don't know your full parent story, why they left or why they leaving, until you become a parent and you find yourself leaving. And, and moving differently because if I don't let my son go, we're going to make the news. Yeah. I got to, he he, I, he he need to be a man. Yeah. I can't do nothing else for him in this household. You know, a lot of women don't understand. I say this all the time, and I mean this to men and women. A man can't teach a woman, a girl, how to be a woman. And a woman can't teach no. a boy how to be a man. Let me share something with you that's going on, you know what I'm saying, with me. So my son, my second to the oldest son, me and his mom, we really, he's 17. We really hadn't been together since he was 17. When he was five, he came to my house, right? And he had done something. I was getting ready to, to spank him. Well, I just, you know, I grabbed the belt and I threatened to spank him. And you know how kids do, they get to running around, right? Mm -hmm. So he fell and he hit his eye on my coffee table, right? I explained it to her, but she felt like, oh, I purposely tried to do something to him, right? Yeah, so uh, long story short, 
she held that against me for years. For years, I couldn't talk to him. We didn't have what? a relationship. Yeah, man. Like, numbers change, move, all this type of shit. The only time I got a call was when they needed some money, right? And I'm doing whatever I can to, even though I hate this whole ass shit because I feel like I'm being played, I'm doing whatever I need to do to try to build the relationship. So it's like three, four years that went by, right? Uh, she started calling me and telling me, hey, he's misbehaving. You know what I'm saying? So How I, old is he by now? Uh, he's like seven, eight, eight, about eight, eight, okay, nine. Okay, he's stage two, okay. Right, so she like, you know, he's starting to act out and this and that. So I tell her straight up, I say, look, I'm good financially. Send them to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't need no money. I don't need you to send me nothing. Just send them to me. Right. She ain't want to do that. Why okay, is that? Okay, for whatever reason. Because as long as he's there, I send the money. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I send the money. She gets the money. It ain't like he's finna take the money. You know what I'm saying? So I guess that's her way of keeping, you know, keeping the cash flowing or whatever, right? So years pass. After that, she called me and tell me that he was, he was, uh, he was put in the hospital because he was getting ready to commit suicide. Now, he's a boy. And what a lot of these parents don't understand when they sending their kids to school, your child ain't meant to sit in a in, in chair for eight hours a day, man. So he's a boy. He's fidgeting. The, the teacher said that he had ADHD. ADHD. Instead of her consulting with me, she don't consult with me on the important shit. I only get a call when it's time for the money. You get what I'm saying? But she called me this time and told me what was going on. Right. So when she told me what was going on, I was like, hey, you got to take him off this medicine. She had allowed them to put him on medicine or whatever. Right. So all of this is going on and I'm steady telling her every time, send them to me. Yeah. Send them to me. Send them to me. So this week I get a call. I hadn't talked to her in a while. Something told me to just call. It's always me calling. Right. Mm -hmm. So I called and hey, how y'all doing? Yada, yada, yada. First thing she goes into telling me how he's bucking her, how he's trying to raise up and all this other stuff. Now he's taller. Yep, that's he, natural. He's, he's sick something, yep. right? So when she's telling me all of this, I got a smile on my face. Call me a whole ass nigga or whatever. As, soon as, she, know what's about as soon as she got through talking, I couldn't wait to tell her. I told you so. Yeah. I told you. Because all those times I kept telling you, hey, man, what you're doing is you setting a trap for yourself. Yeah. He can con you with the, mama, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? He did that for years. Until he seen like, hey, man, I ain't got to do that shit no more. You can't. She tell me he don't want to go to school and all this other stuff. And a lot of women don't understand. You bring that shit on yourself, man. If the father want to be there, it's times when she didn't call me and told me, hey, man, I'm struggling this and that, that, and that. You know, can you send me some money? No. You got a nigga over there. Send my <laughs> son over here. Oh, Lord. You yeah. get what I'm saying? I totally send understand. Send my son over here. I'm not finna send no money and you got a whole nigga over there. I'm not taking, send my son over there. Yeah. You wouldn't do that. But they'll say that, hey, my son is the most important thing. If you're struggling and you're calling for help because you can't take care of the child. Right. And I'm saying, hey, send the son, send him to me. I take care of him and lighten that load for you. Right, right. You won't do that. Do she have other kids in the household? Yes, she has yeah. other kids. It's you know what I'm saying? I want to break up the, yeah. I totally understand. Trust me. So I worked at a psych hospital for four years. Yeah. So I worked on the kids unit. I worked on the um, the 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 pick you unit. I worked on on the um, the heroes unit. I worked on all units when it come down to psych. And I tell you what, it's starting to be a lot of us in there now. Yeah. And we were slowly taking over that that arena because when you don't know what to do, a lot of moms will call the police on their son. Hmm. Like you, 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 you all, you exhausted all resources. You try the, the spanking, you try the begging and the pleading and the bribing. You try the guilt trip. You exhausted all the resources. And now you just stuck with, I don't want to be here. And if you don't find me a place to go, I'm going to start finding me somewhere to go. And you start seeing kids run away and stuff like that and you start seeing am alerts for 13 14 year olds which means like they they not lost they somewhere but they didn't tell you where they was going and it's 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 something that we definitely need to talk about in, in our community yeah. we start taking over the psych hospitals man let me uh how, what's what's you and your mom? Is your mom still living? Oh yeah, I've been taking my mom for 16 years. What's, 17 years now. Yeah. yeah. What's what's y'all relationship? 
my mom has been rocking and rolling for with me forever. I'm just so appreciative to her. Anybody know me know her because my mom always been there. So my kids had never been in the house by themselves technically. They just my didn't mom, have you. Yeah. So and when you in the house with grandma, grandma gonna let you do a little more because the way she neglected you as a kid. So you just the kids are able to play on the emotions of the grandmother. But my mom is my girl. Yeah. What's you and your son's relationship like now, being that, uh, uh, are you guys like in a better place? Absolutely. So before I got on this, before I was reached out to you, I talked to my body and he was like, mama, you don't really got to tell that. I was like, no, because it's a lot of people dealing with this. Yeah. That hiding behind work is, is, is a, is a tool that women use when they don't know what else to do at home. And a lot of people suffering out here with that, I'm stuck at home because my mom worked. And it's help out here. Yeah. Not just with um, resources, but it's help for as really budgeting your money and making the cap on the overtime. Like, I'm only working five days. I will be home by this day. If you're a nurse, do you can you get a job at your kid's school? Do you have to work? at the long hospitals and those conversations need to be inside the homes right now. You know what God showed me about me what is that? and a lot of other people? You know why we go get two jobs? Why is that? Because we have fear of lack. A person that knows that all that God can meet all their needs, right? Mm -hmm. It's people that's working in McDonald's. That's living better yeah. than people that got two, three jobs. You know, you laugh at them or whatever, but they get to be with their kids. Mm -hmm. They get to, you get what I'm saying? And they making ends meet. God showed me that because, and it was true. Growing up in poverty, you we work also so hard to try to give our kids a better life, right? And not understanding that it's fear attached to it. Yeah. I don't want to disappoint my kids. I don't want to have to do this. So I'm going to work two jobs. But the closer I got with God, the more I started understanding. The job that I have, he blessed me with it. Facts. The, the, the house, everything, he blessed me with it. Facts. He said, I know my plans for you, plans to prosper you and not harm Jeremiah, you, plans to give Jeremiah, you a future and a hope. You, you better know it. You get what you, I'm saying? You better know it, yeah. When he, when he said that, I really held on to that, okay. and he's been making a way ever since. Absolutely. I tell, I, I try to talk to people because it, it ain't just you. I have partners that's dealing with the same thing. Man, I'm they work on the railroad, or they get to work out of town offshore, and they so consumed with the money that they're getting to the point where even, even one of my partners, he came and he told me, he said, man, bro, I almost had to punch my son down. I ain't never had to deal with this with my son, but he's been gone six months. Mm -hmm. People don't understand how much can change yeah. in six months. How much, especially with a child, their mind is so subjective. They're always learning. It's like a sponge and, you know, they go to the game and they, and, and they friend daddy is there and you not there. Even though you ain't in jail or nothing, you at work. And you pay for the game. You pay for the game. They may not understand. The they not, they don't understand, man, I'm doing this to make sure you have a better life. Yeah. Right. But then it also comes a time where, when we do get in a position to be able to say, Hey man, I'm a chill. A lot of us don't. Yep. We just want to keep mashing oh, the right. gas. We just want to keep mashing the gas. And then you look back and that child that was five years old is now 18 and he's getting ready to leave and you done missed so much. Because working people who don't understand economics, they don't know how to utilize the money in their house they already have. Yeah. And this is why it's important to have a man in the house. So, cause the male role is to protect and provide. Yeah. Whatever you give to me, I should be able to multiply. multiply. Okay, so you know this. So if you give me a hundred dollars say it's for groceries, it's for me to find a way to make sure we have groceries with this hundred dollars. It's not for me to go out there and come up with a trick, quick scheme, and pocket the hundred dollars. You need to start processing your life as if if my man give me this, I gotta do with this. 
and that's not what's going on with the world. People are coming up with all types of ways to get over, and when you no longer have those ways to get over, mm -hmm. you live with a reality that you really couldn't take care of your kids. And you're going to see this play out when women get these food stamps and these housing, and when they age out, when the kids age out of food stamps, who's going to take care of this mom? Then she's going to start being a burden on her kids, and then the cycle will continue. Yeah. Because she never really learned how to take care of her or her kids without the help of resources. Yeah, yeah. Being that you are successful, right? Be Why you keep using that term? Because, because... Because I got my bachelor's degree? No, because the reason why I'm using the term is because, yeah. you know, you have something called high value men and women. And those are the successful people, right? So being that you're accomplished, do you do you find it hard to date, to be in a relationship? <laughs> no, to, to be in a relationship, to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, be able to have that that male figure around? Let me tell you this. Because some dudes be intimidated by a, 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 a female that got herself together. Only men who want to use her. Yeah. So I, I, I've been around all types of men, especially working in the medical field. I didn't see doctors, anesthesiologists, uh, 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 just drivers, all, all types of men. Then you go back to who you see men with no job. Who cares? So. A man would take a woman that works at the Waffle House and looks attractive yeah. and promote her. Yeah. You know, just because she looks good and she can be trained. Yeah. So, no, I don't have a problem getting a man. I won't say I'm the best looking woman in the world. I'm not no drop dead woman looking, but dating is difficult when you have children, period. And it's even more complicated when you're trying to get a degree and working. So no, it's, it's not hard, but I would say this. I wish I would have stayed with the men that actually promoted me. Mm -hmm. If I would have stayed with my little girl's dad, mm -hmm. and he's married, so no disrespect to his wife. Yeah. I love their relationship. You know, I, I, I tell her, what you did with him, I couldn't do because yeah. I would have been with him. Yeah. But now that I see him at this level of his life, look, hey man, <laughs> <laughs> if I would have had, if I would have know what I know now, I yeah. would have been. Yeah. 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 Uh, so when you say it's hard dating now, right? Yeah. What? It, what? It, with a child, I understand. Yeah. But what is it like? The the Quality of men out here. Hey man, I take I, I take anybody right now. No, I'm <laughs> no um, I'm I'm so cool with who I am. I don't really I could I, I could take a, a dude and, and and speak into the inner man that he really is and make him make what he have already and just turn it to another way. If you if you working at McDonald's, you flipping burgers. Hey, let me show you how to get this food truck and yeah. move it, move the room like that. I could speak into um, uh, the the inner man of you, and I could I could switch it up. Like if you moving boxes, let's go get this 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 box truck and become a mover and put your last name on this on this truck. So it's not what he could bring to the table uh, financially. I need me a man that he he wanted to put me in my place, and if you don't put me in my place. You ain't gonna have a place. Yeah, yeah. I I, I had just uh, it's, I had posted a video not too long ago talking about how important having the right woman is. Absolutely, come a, on. A lot of Mr. these, Mike. a lot of guys. First of all, I'm gonna be honest, man. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a group of men in my life like this before. Never? Never. Never? Are you I sure? I ain't never seen so many bitch ass niggas in my Are life. Are you sure? You they, know what I'm saying? They been around. Yeah, I just <laughs> wasn't associating with them like that. But uh, so many men, you know, they scream, oh, I don't need no woman for this. And I don't, but I understand that's that. that. That's the existence that's coming from their mama. Yeah. Because I, I, every dude that I know that's successful, for real, for real. Even my partners that I was, you know, that I that's older than me, that I was checking out and while they was making a transition for me to see, like, oh, niggas can really get out the streets. You know, yeah. when they got serious, 
they went and got them some type of business and they settled down with one woman. And that one woman and them, I've seen them go from nothing to having three, four hundred thousand dollar houses now. You get what I'm saying? So that happens because uh, uh, God give a man a vision. If we if we gonna speak, come on, biblically, because I don't know your religion preference. So let's let's talk about from the Bible Bible uh, base standpoint. Okay, God speak only to me. There's no one in the Bible God spoke to. Come on, man. Never. Come on, man. Okay, so let's get that clear. Gabriel the angel spoke to Mary. No, people gonna say Mary. No, an angel spoke to Mary. Said so what you care is gonna be the Messiah. So. The vision always was for the man to hear. Yeah. Now, a woman have intuition, which you tell me your vision, and with my intuition, Cultivated. and that's how. So, you 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 can't tell your homeboys nothing; they will kill it. Yeah. I can't tell my homegirls nothing; they will kill the dream. Yeah. That's something a man or woman gonna have to work on. And when you get like, so I'm in school. I'm getting my master's in business law. You can't even get to a certain level without being married. They don't. They don't want to deal with you because they gonna feel like you are gonna waste a lot of time in that relationship plan. They want you already with a woman. They don't got time to play with you when it come down to divorce. You. you that's why I'm going to jump interview to ask you about your family because we want to know how how we gonna promote you. We can't have you walling out. We can't have you misrepresent the company. And once a man carries himself like a brand and you're going to mess the bag up, messing with these other women, then you got to learn how to deny yourself, your flesh of, you know, BS. Yeah. But, yeah. A lot of these companies I've seen where, like, if it's a scandal, mm -hmm. where a, a husband is cheating or something, they'll automatically get rid of you because you they got, don't want to be associated with you that. You got to go. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you got to hold your homeboys accountable, too, though. You gotta hold people accountable. If you cheating, you you cross me out. Yeah. You cross the woman out that you lay next to, you cross me out. Oh, you out seen too. my video? Yeah. 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 I watch. I, people, people don't, people don't uh it's a lot that we can avoid if we just pay attention. You know, there's a saying that people tell you, people, uh, when a person show you who they are, believe them. Yeah. You know, believe them. Uh like you was just saying when it came to the cheating and all of that, I don't subscribe to that. I don't respect that because. Well, it's only cheating if you're married. Yeah. But it's another conversation too. But but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I've yeah. seen how you threw that in there. But it's uh, only cheating when you're married. And I tell you this: a man who don't want to be married, you really can't get in bed with business with him. Cause why you don't want to? You you can't seal the deal. What you scared of? You gotta be. It's it's. It's our marriage is business. Yeah. And if you, yeah. So look, when we it all out topic, we just nah, but, but yeah, we just we just we probably be talking about uh, ne child neglect by all of this, all of this, school. all of this goes with yeah. it. You I, get what I'm saying? All of this goes with it. I'm a vessel, you know. People feel so comfortable talking to me. Yeah. Cause I'm gonna be honest. I could tell you why I messed up and why I didn't mess up and what what God about to promote me at, and I'm a, I'm my testimony going going to save a lot of people. Yeah. I already knew that since I was a kid. Um, my teacher told me I was going to be a lawyer when I was in the sixth grade, and next year I will be one. You know, congratulations. Thank you. You know, people see value in you when they can get something from you. Supposed to. Uh, people be ashamed to tell about their past. Your Why past, because they, let's just say a person used to be a dauphin, right? Okay. Because of the shame that came along with that time period of them being a dauphin, they'll feel some type of way if somebody say, oh, that nigga used to be a dauphin. Mm. Not understanding, to me, that's a badge of honor. This is why I say that. Let's just say this dude was strung out on crack, down bad. Okay. Everybody seen he the junkie. He fucked up. Ten years later, he got a business now. Okay. That's something to celebrate. I have a question, though. Go ahead. Mr. Mike. So, with that same thought pattern, if a guy used to be gay, is he able to bounce back from that and not be gay and get a wife and get a business? Will he still be respected in, in the community for that? I can't say. I can't. No, no, no. Listen. I can't say that. He'll get that respect because everybody's respect level is different. 
Okay. But I will say this though. If a man was gay or a woman was gay and they got their shit together and now they in a relationship and they with a woman and they married and they not living that lifestyle no more, who are we to hold them to that same spot where they used okay. to be at? I just want to You know, sure. like because I'm a man, some niggas would be like, oh, that nigga gay. Kim Folk, that nigga, if he was gay, if he was gay and he's not gay no more, it's just like if I used to play basketball, right? And I don't play basketball no more. I can't run around and still say I'm an NBA player. I don't play no more. Okay. You get what I'm saying? You can't hold me. Them rules don't apply to me no more. But for somebody else, because I'm not judgmental like that, but to somebody I'm else. I'm hyper judgmental. Why though? Why am I judgmental? That's yeah. why I'm going to be a lawyer. Somebody have to be judgmental. It's needed. In our, it's needed in the world. Everybody yeah. can't be, you know, um, empathetic or <laughs> passionate. Somebody going to say, ah, nah, I don't, you know, I can make a judgment call. Yeah, he's going there. She's going here. Yeah. It's, it's needed. Let me ask you a this question. This personality trait is needed. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Yes. If you met a guy. Okay. That used to be gay. Ah. Uh. Right? And you met him and y'all, y'all in the, you know, y'all dating or whatever, and it's going good. And then he come out and tell you, hey, I used to be this. Would you give him a chance? <laughs> on TV, on YouTube, you're gonna do me like this, Mike. You asked me, so come on. You have to would this you, out, man. Would you give him a chance? I, I, I will answer this question out, out, off camera, out of respect. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> somebody going to be in the comments, they're going to call somebody yeah, out of respect. Yeah. But I will answer that question for you, though. Okay. That's out of camera. Okay. Uh, one, more, uh, one more thing that I, going back to when we was talking about dating okay. and cheating and stuff, right? Okay. You know why I feel like a lot of marriages don't work? Because people don't take the dating process seriously. I don't dating. believe in dating, but okay. You don't believe in dating? No. So. It's prolonging, but okay. So you believe if you meet somebody right then? I believe in people going to be in the comments <laughs> like, oh, Moniece, <laughs> I told you not to say that. So I believe in poly relationship. I don't think no woman ever had a one man to herself ever in history. I don't think men could be uh, faithful for as one woman. It takes like five people to 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 build a successful person. Um, so I never had a man to myself. So I can't even speak on cheating or not because I accepted a lot. You don't. You don't, you don't believe that. You don't believe that a man. Can be faithful to one I woman. I think that it's it's time, it's a period. His time he do exercise the faithfulness of, of of sex, but however, I know it's a woman that know my man differently, and if she ever call him up, there it goes again. He back on the pony ride. You think so? I know so. That's, and it don't bother me though. Yeah. It don't bother me. I, I don't give a damn, Mike. Yeah. I just don't care. <laughs> Cool. Give me a rest. Yeah. I don't give a damn. So you willing to share your man? You gonna share him regardless. We go ahead. And, right. Let's just sit down. <laughs> like, take out the conversation we have earlier. Let's have this conversation. All right. We all sharing each other. Ain't not one woman walking this earth say she got a man by herself. I don't believe that. Now I don't. I'm not suggesting you ask answer these questions on because you have a family to protect. I don't have this, so I'm gonna answer this question yeah. as honest and open. And, and if a woman in the comments will be honest with herself, that happens few in between. If if a if a man don't get you straight out of high school and you haven't grew their bond and y'all grow that together, yeah. if he already had children by four other people yeah. and you got kids by three other people, y'all yeah. in a poly relationship and y'all gotta y'all gotta accept it because if that man is needed in that household, he going over there and vice versa and she needed in that house like and it's not always about sex. I was just about to say that. It's not a sexual thing. It's a present thing. If your baby mama call you today and say, Mike, I need you to come over and help me with this house. Is it gonna benefit our children? You have obligations in that woman's household. No, I don't. <laughs> yes, you do. No, I don't. See, I'm see, this you is I, I'm glad we're having this conversation. 
bro, I was the one of the biggest hoes out here. You know what I'm saying? I was having it my way. Okay. Some nigga get strung out on drugs. My drug was women. Okay. Thank God for delivery. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think that I could be, you know, committed to one person or be faithful or none of that, right? But there comes, even with me, and I say this shit to men too, as a man or woman, there should come not not if if not knocking nobody for what they do. Okay. If you want to be in a poly relationship, whatever you want to do, you know what I'm saying? Like if you want to be single all your life, whatever you want to do. But I God feel God don't bless people that single, by the way, but continue. Look, I feel like this. As a man or a woman, when you decide to say, hey, I'm gonna commit to something. You have an obligation to commit to that. Commit or under covenant, because that's two different words. Under under a covenant. Okay, so let's talk about covenant, because you said committed and yeah. faithfulness. So those, <clears throat> those you, are you different. Co commitment, commitment, you have to have commitment to honor the covenant. You have to. But a lot of people not under Okay. But look, no, the, this, the, this, the point that I was okay. trying to make about it was just the dating process, right? So when I... To me, from, from who I've been talking to, my partners and shit, when they're dating, right, they dating three, four, three, four people at As one time. Should. Right? Okay. That's what we're told. But how can you honestly give somebody a chance? If you have options, say for instance, I'm dating three, four different females. Okay. Two of them might be really, really good for me. Okay. How do you but, eliminate them then? I, I might do that just off of bullshit, right? I might, I might have a female that call me on my bullshit and I don't like that. Some, some men ain't man enough to accept that. I don't like that, right? So because she's calling, even though she's calling me on my bullshit and it may, it may make me better, I don't see the fact that it'll make me better. I'm just, oh, she pissed me off. I got two more I can go over here and juggle. And you juggling. What age are you when we doing this? I got to I gotta see the whole picture. That's the lawyer in me. What age? Yeah. Uh, let's just say a guy in his... 20, between 25 30 you get what i'm saying at that time i feel like a man should be getting himself together getting ready to settle down this is definitely a black community problem why you say because that because i work with all types of people filipino chinese japanese indian pakistan they already married by the age of 18 19 this is why they're able to move their community further because they don't have these type of conversations yeah you want me to tell you why, why because they why? understand the institution of marriage yeah. we don't exactly we don't we think it's just bullshit. That's why we at the bottom of uh, society. Yeah. We at the bottom because we don't understand the institution of marriage. That's why I was bringing it up. Okay, in other countries, right? Like you said, like Chinese people. They Outside get, of Africa. I'm yeah. going to tell you why we don't believe in just a minute. I'm going to hit you, but I'm going to continue. So, China, uh, like, uh, when it comes to us, we because we don't believe in the institution of marriage, we will play the dating game and juggling females all for the sake of, oh, I'm trying to find the right person. You've been trying to find the right person for 10 years. That's not your job. That was your parent's job to find the right person for you. Hmm. That's that how they, that's how they do it in other cultures. Yeah, yeah, so the thing is about black African-American people, we are African by DNA, but European by thoughts. That was not our role to do anyway. Yeah. That was your parents', parents. job to find you somebody gonna grow our family to the next level. And somebody that's compatible. Compatible and compatible with the bag. Yeah. Fuck yeah. the looks. They you have will to, learn. They... Close your eyes tight, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they, you'll learn to love them. What? They're, 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 they, but and, Feed and, them and, enough. And, and then they gotta come with the bag to even have action. You know so what I'm saying? That is why a woman will. Go with a man who have five baby mamas and not the nigga with no kids. It's 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 DNA in us to do that, to go with the alpha male. Mike, you would have five kids, five women, and a woman with no kids would still pick you over blow Joe that ain't got shit. And I, I and she could have went with him and built him up. Damn, we don't want that. Yeah. Why why you why you think they don't it, want that? Ain't no why it's 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 our D it's 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 in us to do that. Yeah. We are prone to be with the alpha and not... See, a lot of us think we alpha because of this. Some of y'all is born into some bullshit. Some of y'all... <laughs> no, a lot of y'all don't need 
a family. Yeah. Everybody don't supposed to have them. Yeah. Like we live in a world that everybody's supposed to have everything and know the fuck. Some is people not. don't deserve it. Yeah. It was never in you to have that. It was never God didn't bless. That's why when you talk about a praying grandmother, that's necessary because she's when you see a, a family with a bunch of women. It was not meant for them, them witches, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> you ever seen somebody got a bunch of anus yeah. and no uncles? Yeah. No protection? Yeah. People been slapping and beating on your anus and your mama in the neighborhood? Yeah. Yeah, you y'all was supposed to be married off and, and move that last name. God didn't like that, yeah. that group of people. <laughs> let me let me ask you this while it's on my mind. We Somebody here, gonna chew me up in the comments, man. Nah, man. <laughs> they gonna say that lady crazy. Nah, they 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 gonna they gonna see you dropping some gym. Yeah. Uh you here now with, I am. With, with no, I'm saying like you here with a lot of our younger women now. They like, man, I don't need no nigga. I don't, you know what I'm saying? What do what you camera is mine so I can This tell one right them? here. <laughs> you better get away from me. <laughs> Girl. Who gonna take care of you when you get all, all them kids you done had? They ain't gonna come for you. You ain't raise them to take care of you. Yeah. You gonna be by yourself. And this and, and this and this the majority, our women saying, hey, I don't need no man. I don't need no nigga for shit. A nigga can't do nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 because you scared it's not gonna happen for you, so you just try to shy away from it. We tend to jump over speak so somebody wanna ask questions. So we tend to tell ourselves we don't want that because we don't think we're able to do it anyway. Hmm. It's a defense mechanism that women do. Our all women want to be a lady. We all want to be in a marriage. We all want the family. But some something happened in her life, excuse me, <clears throat> to say it's not going to happen. I got to accept it. And I'm going to flip it and say, I picked this life. The reality, you did not. Yeah. And it, it's a defense mechanism. With that being said, it's like you said, it's going to be a lot of people watching this, <laughs> right? A lot of women that's, you know, Career driven, I say that. Career driven, I'm not gonna say uh, successful. Uh, what b before we go, what would you like to say to them from your perspective of, of chasing the career and that type of when stuff? You, when you're 75 years old, if you make it to 75, because I know somebody who mama still a nurse at 75 years old. She still be near flow at 75. She ain't got no control of her grandkids. She almost know them people. It's going to come the time that that, that money ain't going to mean nothing. Yeah. Them grandkids, them fishing trips, that love, they, they call you, a, they got they got a name for you, and they, they call you Mima, and they grab you by your neck, and they love you, and you, you walk past your grandson, he got your name tattooed on him and stuff. Yeah. That's what it's about. It ain't about, it's cool to have that nursing degree. I, I'm going to say this one time. Go ahead. I, I watched this girl for a long time. I ain't gonna put her name out. And I remember seeing in her Instagram bio, it says mother of two. And she had like the little emojis of the kid's face. And then she got her nursing license. She knocked, no, no, she got married first. She knocked them kids out the way and put her uh, wife of this. Yeah. She had a nigga name tag, uh, uh, tag to it and had a kiss of face. And then she became a nurse and knocked that nigga name out the way. And she got LVN to RN and loading and everything. Yeah. And that's how high you get because the kids used to give you that high. And when them kids don't get that high no more, you go find you something else to replace. And it's gonna come the time that job and that career is not gonna give you that high. Yeah. And what you gonna do? You gotta be, you gotta be cool with just what God put in your life. And if you bless with kids, enjoy them as kids because they're not gonna be kids forever. They're gonna yeah. be grown. And that job, somebody younger than you gonna come in and then your old ass gonna be the old person at that job that don't know nothing and this it, that it's it's gonna be a job. No matter how much career you think it is now, yeah. it's gonna be a job. It's yeah. gonna leave a boy. And when somebody's standing over your casket, my cousin passed away like three years ago and I spoke at her funeral. And me and my cousin was in school together. We do everything together, so when I graduated, they, they put her name in honorary of, you know what I'm saying, to honor, because she would have been graduating. And I'm talking over my cousin, and only thing, we was talking about how hard she worked. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I don't want to be that. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be known for working. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you send me my husband, because yeah. I don't want, 
I remember the first moment when I said, I'm about to get married, because this shit started to be ghetto out here. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, this is not what I signed up for. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's be laughing, but it's lonely. Yeah. It's lonely when you're in that bed and you got your pen and paper and you doing things that is not of your nature. It's not my nature to, to balance my house. My nature was to make my house a home. Yeah. To cook. To bring the light, to put the music on. You know, on Sunday morning, your mommy put the mu music on. Yeah, set the atmosphere. Yeah, that's my role. I'm yeah. over here painting walls and shit. Yeah, like this is not, this is not who I am. But I tell a young lady who 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 thinking chasing their bag is important. All you doing is 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 lessening your chances finding the real man. Yeah, work on your personality. Yeah. Work on skills or how to keep that man in the house. Yeah. Learn how to shh, learn how to move that man without saying stuff to him. Those are skills that really resonate with a man. Yeah. Not even food, cause these niggas know how to cook now. They know how to fry <laughs> chicken. We we done <laughs> fucked it up and taught these niggas how to cook. It ain't cooking no more to them. It's really peace. Like yeah. shutting the fuck up in their house and letting that man. Man, these men know how to cook chicken. Yeah, we ain't. They took over that. We used to be good at that, but it's 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 a lot. And we laugh because these men raised by their mamas and they zesty. Yeah. So we gotta. We, we can't get grandpa. We gotta be okay with with them getting a Mexican man cutting the grass. I like. Why did I get a man who don't know how to cut the grass? Nobody know how to cut grass no more. Yeah. So we gotta be cool with the generation. It's not fair to compare. Me into the past is not fair. Yeah, it's not fair to compare me to your grown mom. Yeah, don't do that because it's 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 not encouraging me. Yeah. It made me feel like a failure. Yeah, and when you can constantly making somebody feel like a failure, they don't even try. Yeah, you got your queen. Speak life into this generation so they can find them something. Cause yeah. you constantly talk about your grandma generation, it's it's like why should I try? Cause that's not what's going on. Yeah. Man, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, I Mr. really, Mike. really appreciate it. They're going to chew me up in the car. They, no, they won't. But uh, I love y'all. Man, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you watched this uh, interview all the way to this far, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, comment. Let us know what you think about the interview. And until next time, we appreciate you.